seven, eight, nine. Yeah. Yes, oh! Hi. 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 How are you? Hi. Hello. Good. Hi. What's crack a lacking? You know, just living the living the dream. I am getting used to this new schedule. Like everyone should know, my daughter's back in school. And the last time she was in school, she was quite young. So like the daily routine of getting dressed, brushing her teeth, doing her hair, yada, 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 was like always directed by me. And now I find, you know, she's 12 now. And it's like, she has a limited amount of time when she comes home from school. She has to like eat. There's like all of these steps that need to be taken. And I, I also realize when she's coming home from school, I ask her about her day and she'll be like, I forgot this thing or, oh yeah, this thing. So like, I'm, I'm starting to see how she needs help organizing and like trying to give her tools for doing that. So she has like a little notebook and I was trying to explain to her, you know, creating her to-do list of like writing down her little things that she knows she has to do. And she's like, no, 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 I can just keep it in my head. And I was like, no, nigga, no, you can't. Obviously you can't, you done forgot the damn page. Like you don't know how to keep it in your head, but like feeling her resistance or feeling her not quite understanding the potential in that, as well as trying to like get her on this routine so that it's automated so that I don't have to tell her like brush your teeth da 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 so I've been like working with checklists Jojo I notice also really values um order so I'm mm. trying to like tap into that part of her and explain like oh my god when I do this shit there is ease in my life but she hasn't quite gotten it yet and I can feel the anxiety in me start to build as I'm trying to like keep her on task. And so I've been noticing when she walks in, it's just like a ticking time bomb to the time she goes to bed. I'm like, I'm just telling her to do this. And have you done this yet? Make sure you did this. You know, it's 8.30. If it's 8.30, have you taken out your clothes? Da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to shrink her natural um I don't want to like rob her of the experience of being unprepared and seeing what that feels like but also I want to get bring her to feel the magic of having some order so I, I'm it's just kind of like a weird space of like letting go a little bit um and also giving her skill sets that like I didn't learn I had to learn the hard way. Like nobody was fucking telling me about to-do lists until I was, you know, well into high school or maybe even graduated going to college. Like nobody, I didn't have these like habits. I, I've created the habits by myself and I'm still creating them in so many ways. Um, but I also don't want to stifle her and control her and, and create, build anxiety in her right because i my energy i can feel is anxious so i don't want her to like to feel that so shout out to parents if there are any parents that you know have these preteen teenagers how have you built these habits do you let them forget their books so that they kind of go to school and with their pants down and being like, oh shit, like this, I'm, I'm out here looking crazy or I'm not getting the grades that I need because I'm not utilizing these tools that mom offered or do you micromanage until they're trained and they're automated? I don't know, I'm trying to figure that out. Please help me um, to the older, wiser parents that, that had middle school kids. Um, and it's kind of exciting because in my own world and trying to get deeper into the business, business is wild, y'all. Wow. It's a beautiful, it's an alchemy. It's an alchemy. Like once you figure stuff out, you understand all of the moving parts. 
then it becomes like this magical thing. And, and then you, it, it's just, it's, it's captivating. It's exciting. It's challenging, but I'm, I'm in school right now in a way that feels really, really uncomfortable and really scary. And it's, whew, it is a self-esteem thing. They don't teach you this shit, but I'm at this place now where it's like, all right, yeah. What is what did this guy say to me? He's like, yeah, you're marketable, but you you don't know anything about marketing. Like you're marketable, but you're not actually marketing anything. You're not actually using the tools of marketing. So there's all this back end, these numbers. This uh, brilliant being. Oh my god! And then. Even last week, you were sharing like how you were in the company of some people that are really like powerful and dynamic, mm -hmm. and how they show you what's possible in so many ways. It's like they take you to the other side. And to everybody listening, I hope that you don't shy away from those kind of people or feel intimidated. Keep them close. Everybody says you should be people, people smarter than you, but like to actually experience that um, is an intimate, it can feel intimidating. It can, you are tempted to like doubt yourself. You're tempted to be like, I won't be like this person. But also if you have the right, right people around you, they're going to be like, no, nigga, like, come on, get up, do the things. But this person's name is Rolando and he's a, a business consultant, a brilliant marketing um, Why don't you bring him person. on here? Would he come? Maybe I will. I mean, I, I guess I, if that's people what people want to to learn and know for about, the, I, I would ask the, him. Well, everybody got a fucking side hustle now. Everybody's their own brand, right? But I'm saying, like, for a segment or for possibly the he's Thursday really brilliant. Episodes, I would love that. You would love it, Antoinette. You would love this stuff because it's it's just. It's it is alchemy. It's like, oh, when you mix this with this, then you could do this. But I want it to look like this, so I'm gonna add. A, it's just, it's it's amazing, and I'm I don't know anything. I don't know anything, and um, there's a lot more to learn. And I'm I'm excited, and I'm in class as well. So shout out to me and JoJo going to school, leveling up, trying to create new habits, and learn new things. Uh, what was so it's giving it's giving um expansive it's giving it's expansive it's giving yeah. dynamic it's, it's giving, giving self-actualization i i feel it i feel it and it feels good to know like oh wow there's even more there's more in me there's more to learn and like i i can do it it's happening I'm Yo, it's, it's giving possibility, it's giving honey. Possibility. I love that for you. I have never heard you say that. It's giving possibility. It's giving just it's giving focus. It's giving like, oh, okay. Desire, huh? Yeah. It's giving back to Speaking nurses. In there. When I was like, all right, I'm gonna go to nurses. Oh, God, <laughs> you had to deal there. That shit. Right, well, I think y'all understood the grind that I was on, the focus. I was working and going to school, child. Mm. Well, I'm very proud of you. It feels good. I'm excited good. to hear more. You need to um, share the wealth, though, Sheila. Whatever of you course. learn, of course, of course, bring it on over. Of here. course, absolutely. Well, I'm glad that you're feeling so great about. You know, I feel like there are both some things that we set set out that we said we were going to work on. You know, yours was like I'm going to get in touch with my desires, with my wants, which is very exciting, mm -hmm. and your passion. And I was like, yo, I'm on this journey of welcome home, get back in my body, take care of myself. I did, I wasn't as expansive as you were in my uh, latest experience. <laughs> so I have been, actually, I, I think it was a victory. And I'll tell you why. I have been working out. I've been, not as much as I've wanted to, but really sticking to I'm doing this for my mental health. Like right. I have to get out of the house and get on my bike. I'm going to, if I'm not feeling good, whatever it is and understanding like, Oh no, this is a part of like your maintenance. So I've been very much less concerned with um, even weightlifting and things where that doesn't feel as mental. Yoga feels more like, okay, I can be present. Mm -hmm. Riding my bike feels like, okay, this is mindfulness, you mm -hmm. know, really tapping into those things and but taking they're not, you know, 
rest, restorative yoga. It's it's hot yoga. Like the shit ain't easy. So we're getting the work out of it at the same time. I was then saying to myself, yo, I really feel like roughhousing today. Oh, I'm gonna go to um a boot camp class. I haven't been to boot camp in so long, and I used to love it. It's it's fun. It's like play. Let me tell you something. <laughs> I went to this boot camp class and God bless this teacher. She was really strong. She was encouraging. She was really strong. And she was strong as shit. I was, she was doing body weight stuff that was just wild to me, holding herself perpendicular off the floor, but was small, like unassuming. Girl, she, and, and I was the only newbie in the class. So they're like, anybody new here? And raise my hand. What's your name? Like, oh, Antoinette, there's, Maybe like 20, 30 people in the class, girl. girl, about 40, 45 minutes in, it's an hour class. I'm almost there. We're doing our last set of this circuit and we're about to do the final circuit. And she's like, come on, Antoinette. And I'm on the box and I'm doing dips, right? And I'm like, all right, cool, cool, cool. I'm doing dips because I modified it because what we were doing was we had our toes on the box our arms forward and we were doing push-ups or like shoulder, like pulling, pushing yourself up by your shoulders if you needed to put your knee on the box. And being upside down, something in me, I said, wait a minute, I gotta not be upside down. <laughs> so I did the modified set and she's like, you got it, you've got it. And I was like, I don't think I, I don't think I have it. I don't think I have it. And I pushed her and presumed to vomit. Oh, all over like the that. floor. When I tell you, not you throwing up in the book in the camp. one in the middle of, of monkeypox and COVID and everything else, and I'm the new person. Don't play with me. And I'm like one of the biggest. It was like two other big girls in there. I said, "Fuck." I'm, I'm, they looked at me like, "Come on, girl, you had one job." Was right, the fucking like, keep not going? To like, come in here and do this. <laughs> Get your ass off. Like I embarrassed them when I. T- <laughs> It was bright red. And I'm sitting there like, Ew. why was it red? Girl, my dumb ass, it was because during lunch, I didn't have time to really make my lunch. So I had these flaxseed crackers and I had hummus, garlic hummus. But I took about a pint of hot sauce and poured it in the hummus. And it, was, and it wasn't just hot sauce. It's like a pepper sauce. So it was so spicy. And it's burning my nose. It's going come out my nose a little bit. And then the teacher is looking horrified. And I'll tell you this. The, the reason why this is a win is because I felt shame in the moment. You know, my face is all, my face was already red because I can't breathe in the class. But now it's like hot in a different way. And I'm like, oh, my God. So now I'm actually in pain because I got hot sauce coming out my nose. People are staring at me. And I'm just like. All right. So I had to go get the squeegee thing and start mopping the floor in the middle of this class as they're all still trying to enjoy their workout. Disgusting. And, but the, 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 the win in it was that I'm going to go back. I know that's right. I still enjoy the class and I rode my bike there and I rode my bike home with my head held high. I said, I work goddamn hard. And I'm going to go head back in there. I love that for you. And I might be the girl that threw up. But I'm going to keep the black girl that threw up hot sauce. Nigga shit. Yes. Yo, I had hot. And you know what's even worse? And I don't want to say this, but I had had watermelon for breakfast. Niggas. She said, oh, it smells like black people in here. (laughs) Disgusting. Oh, my God. I said, this why it's all pink and orangey. Ugh, gross. It's that good work by you. Thank you. We're Thank doing you. it. We're doing hard things. We're stepping into the own no- unknown. Listen. And we're becoming I- alchemists. Shout out to the alchemists. Right. Who the fuck has been saying alchemist to you that you keep saying Chill, that word? Because alchemist is re- alchemy is real. That is that alchemist is, my- is real because I be practicing the alchemist, alchemist all producer. the time. No. <laughs> alchemist is real, y'all. Alchemy be working, y'all. Oh my God. Like we powerful. Like Alchemy. Like <laughs> don't play with me. All right, shout out to Alchemy. Yes. yes. Um as we stated, we didn't really ring in our twenty what? Our two hundredth episode twentieth. Our two hundredth episode 
We, I didn't even realize that shit was coming up. I'll be completely honest. I hit you like, yo, uh, did you see this? And neither one of us were excited. We were like, oh, congrats. Okay, well, next up. So we had the bright idea to really ring it in on 201 with the listeners. We have so many voicemails and we are so grateful to always have voicemails. And if you have anything that you want to say to us, preferably something that allows us to comment, contribute, (laughs) or maybe even argue, please call 215-948-2780. That's 215-948-2780. And leave us a voicemail. You have episode topics, question, concern, please let us know. But first up, we're going to, well, not first up, we're going to get into a whole bunch of voicemails that we have that are thought provoking. And I just want to say that these still aren't even all of the voicemails, but um, we're doing the best we can because it's a lot going on right now. So I want to say in addition to the voicemails, we're also receiving your email. Shout out to Talisha Washington. Shout out to all the many folks who um, send us emails, but especially to Talisha. Thank you so much for your kind words and you sharing, you know, your breakthroughs. And yes, we, we, we applaud you. We read that. We heard you onwards and upwards, girl. Keep going. Sorry for saying your full government. My apologies. <laughs> Dang. All right. Yes. Thank you for that. Cause I definitely forgot about that to add that. Number one. Hi. This is Teresa. Um, I just got to listen to your episode about sex, and uh, I can agree with a lot of things on there. One of the things that I agree with is that the fact that, you know, a one-night stand or something to that case can be just as intimate. I mean, I remember one time we went to this, um, I guess you would call it a little sex club, and I just thought it was two guys there that I just, I was like, I've got to have these guys. And it's like they noticed me too. And it was intense and it was beautiful. And they was touching on me and I was touching on them. Never saw them again. But that's, I can count that as one of the most intimate sessions I've ever had with a man. Uh, well, two men at that time. But um, yeah, I think I can't have sex with just, just to be happy. I don't get how people do that. I mean, maybe when I was young, I did, but at this older age, there's just no way. So I definitely understand that. I definitely have to have a connection with a guy. But I just wanted to, you know, share that little tidbit of information. I love you guys. I've been listening to you guys for a long time. You're way younger than me, but you guys have a lot of insight. And um, I enjoy y'all. And I have my daughter become one of your fans, too. So uh, keep up the good work. Love you. Bye. Yo, shout out to Teresa. Oh. Girl, I, wasn't that what part of our dream? We tried to, we trying to listen. We, it was one of our fantasies. Fantasy. That we both, and it's very common. I was like, I want to fall in love with multiple people. You like, I want to get fucked by multiple people. I was like, okay, that's actually I what have I want. A spiritual <laughs> experience. You're like, I think I could be in a commune. I think I'm like, all right, you now. You were like, no, right. I'm trying to get fucked. And I was like, I'm trying to be the center of attention. That's actually what I want. I'm trying to tell you when I saw that with Mandy, with Mandy at that sex club, and that man or that woman—it was either a man or woman—kissing that woman's breast while she was riding in order to climax, and they were talking her through her orgasm. I said, "Uji Jacalia, it's giving (laughs) community." Like I was said, "Wow, this is." This is so, Teresa, you know, I love that for you. Um, I, even though I say that, I just don't know if I could ever do it. I'd probably be like, oh, too many people. Oh, girl, no, nah, you get your little freak ass in the zone, child. Oh, well, <laughs> shot. <laughs> the way you say, you, I don't know. Okay. But, um, <laughs> Teresa, I should also preface that um, the edible's still hitting everyone. So, <laughs> sound goofy. I needed to chill the fuck out today. I've been stressed at work. So, you can see me getting goofy, yeah, right? I I'm, see you. I'm, <laughs> I'm staring at these voicemail. I have them all open in different tabs because I'm like, I'm not going to be able to scroll up find this shit. So, I'm like stressed out. But 
It's all good. Teresa, I love that for you. Thank you so much for calling us. Thank you so much for putting your daughter on and for being the OG that you are. I love, I, I, listen, show us the way, girl. Because that sounds like the way. All right, next up, let's see. Let me make sure I have my ducks in a row. Yes, this is two voicemails. So we're going to start with the first one. Hi, Johnson and Submit. I'm Sylvia Carl. And let you guys know that I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. You guys are like my big sisters that I've never had and always wanted. Um, the podcast is definitely a breath of fresh air. I've been listening to you guys for a year now. And I even just started like recently going back and re listening to the earlier episodes, like all the way from episode one. And it's just, it's amazing to hear the progress that you guys are having. And I love the Monday episodes because I was getting a little spoiled. I'm like, I love them on Thursdays, but I need more. I need more. So I love that you guys have the Monday shows now. Also, um, oh, well, I just want to say my name. My name is Brianna. Um, I am 22. I'll be 23 in October. Lucky Libra. You know, hey, Antoinette, girl. Um, but I just love listening to you guys and giving the advice that you give uh, for us just all ages. I'm learning. I'm putting the work in as well. Um, I just recently bought the book All About Love by Bell Hooks. I believe I said that right. I hope that's the right title. But yeah, um, I just I just love you guys. And y'all been that break up. I love y'all. Y'all been that. I understand. So there's friends are going to bust fight. But y'all be playing most of the time, so I ain't really worried about it. But I just want you guys to know we are listening, and we love you guys. Hey, Shanti. Hey, and Oh, that's not the right one. Oh, I'm embarrassed. Oh, my God. One second. Is that all she... No, it was two voicemails. Oh, the edible. Blame the edible. One moment, please. Hi, y'all. Here we go. Okay, hey, it's me again, Brianna. <laughs> but I just wanted to um, touch on a specific episode I was listening to from you guys about um, shrinking small, shrinking yourself, or something of that manner, or playing small. Um, I've been dealing with that, the imposter syndrome as well, as I just recently graduated with my bachelor's and going into my actual profession um, that my degree is in. I just, I've been dealing with that trying to maneuver within the workspace. This is my first real job. So it's just learning how to just maneuver in in corporate America. And to come find out that these older people that have already been there or been there long enough or whatever, have more years to end than you, they just as childish. And I don't, I don't understand. Why are you 50? And acting like a child. And you that's not the third kind of thing. But um yeah, I'm just trying to find my voice within the workplace and know that I am supposed to be where I'm supposed to be. There's a purpose. I'm gonna serve my purpose, but I just have to find what my purpose is exactly. And I know I don't want to do this specific profession for long. Um I do want to go into like marketing and things like that. Because we need things to pay the bills, okay, at this point. Capitalism. Capitalism, but um, yeah, I'm just trying to figure out why I play small in certain situations, and I I kind of know why. I need to go to counseling as well. I'm gonna look into that, um, but it's very hard to jump out of that space of not being of not playing small because that's your instinct at that point when you've done that for so long. So. Um, again, sorry, I am getting emotional, but I really do appreciate you guys, and I'm I'm looking into it, and I'm going to do the work to get out of that habit and not fall back so much, so, and be that light that I am. I just want to thank you guys again, and I hope you guys are doing the work for yourselves as well, each and every day. Wow. I forgot that fast. I think it's 
Sweet baby Brianna. Brianna. Yeah, Brianna. Sweet baby. Brianna's doing a lot of work over there, huh? She is doing the work. Now I'm starting to do the work. This is the work. You realizing, you noticing every time it comes up. That's it, baby. You in it. Surprise. You ain't just going to wake up and be big. You growing. Keep watering it. Damn, I ain't speaking correctly. Keep watering it. I, um, yeah, I can't agree anymore. I, I'm curious to know, we kind of touched on it, but how are we watering it? Are we doing it? By continually showing up, noticing that it feels uncomfortable, mm. um, finding the excitement and the gratitude in the work as well. Um, dreaming about the, the possibilities, at least for me. Uh, is is a part of it. And, you know, I got JoJo watching too. So it was like, yeah, I, I guess it's also understanding as we expand, whether it's JoJo, whether it's beautiful listeners as well, the, whether it's your close friend, your mom, whoever, as you learn and grow, everybody grows with you. It's that you share your revelations and you unlock shit for other people. Like... Mm-hmm. Anyway, I don't know what you just asked me, but <laughs> alchemy, alchemy, y'all, it's the alchemy, nigga, <laughs> or oh, whatever. Oh my god! God, why? What? Why? What is wrong what? with you? All right, okay, you're just special. Thank you so much for calling. Um, all right, we're gonna. Oh, this one has. They're asking us for advice. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Joke's on you. Um, I guess I need a little advice or questions or have, I mean, not questions. <laughs> well, so I recently started dating someone inside my friend group and never really dated anyone inside my friend group. So I, I guess I didn't know the boundaries and things of that nature. Well, we're a small group. It's only three of us. And I started dating one of the friends, whom to me is, to me is a friend of association. Um, she's my best friend, friend. And, you know, she started bringing her around and stuff like that. And I've noticed since I've started dating this particular person, my best friend, I don't, I don't think she's okay with it. I mean, we asked her stuff, and she'd be like, oh, she's fine. You know, we just took her too fast. Um, She got to get used to it, stuff like that. And so a little backstory, my best friend is in a unhappy marriage right now. So she pretty much uses us, because, you know, we were both two single individuals. She pretty much uses us as her escape. Um, like when she want to go somewhere, she know we're always down to go somewhere because we're, we're quote unquote single or she want to go drinking or we can always come over or she can always come over to us. You know, she kind of uses us as an escape from her marriage. And since we've started dating, you know, or seeing each other talking, we're less accessible to her. And I try to keep things the same as much as I can because I get it. Um, you know, but we'd be wanting a long time and stuff like that too. And I just here recently, I've it's like a little backhanded comments, you know, like we'll all go out to eat, and you know, me and the girl I'm dating, our cab would be the same, and hers would be like that. But she'll make little comments like, "I remember once upon a time we used to have three separate tricks and um things of that nature." And I just don't know how to take this. Um, the little passive aggressive. I, like, I know I, I got to give her grace a little time period. Cause like she said, we took her too fast. But at the same time, I don't know what's what. Like, I've asked her, you know, we've asked her if it bothered her. She said no. She said she's happy for it. But then the little backhanded comments make me look, you know, side-eyed. And I don't know. I guess I kind of want your advice on that. Like, is that normal or... I don't know what I'm asking. Anyway, I hope you guys have a great day. And I'm a new, I'm relatively a new listener. I found you. Poor thing got cut off. 
I, I personally don't think it has anything to do with those two. I think so much of it has to do with her friend mourning the old dynamic and mourning the the connection that she felt like she had to both of you. And now she either, might feel like um, it's, it, the dy- obviously the dynamic has shifted, but that maybe she's not as connected because you two have this deeper connection. She might just feel left out and there's three of you. So there's no one else for her to kind of um, reach out to cling on, to, the cling on, what? Lean on, cling on, lean on. Um, so that that's, those are my thoughts. I think if you sense it and you know it's there, I'm annoying in the way if I sense it, even if they're like, no, nah, it's cool, it's cool. I'm like, it's not though. <laughs> Just like, it doesn't feel cool to me. And maybe, maybe you don't tell her like, it's, oh no, it's not cool. You're doing this. You could just say, you could just say how it feels to you. Like it doesn't feel cool to me. When feels... you make remarks like that. Yes. Like you have to do it in the moment that it comes up. Yeah. Are you Remember sure it's that. cool? What do you need? And you might not be able to give her what you need because the, the, the reality is that the dynamic is shifting. Might not be as available. Either one of you. You just stole her friend with your raggedy self. Like I'm playing. <laughs> yeah, that feels anything? that feels like a a, a, tr- a triangle child. Mm-hmm. Uh, that feels very tricky, as Antoinette would say. Um, for all the parties involved, so tread with honesty. I guess that's it. All you can do is just be honest and and keep the air clear. Um, Cause she's kind of in between both of y'all. Like she has a relate from what it sounds like she has a relationship yeah. with both y'all individually. So now she's like in this space too, probably having information about both of you guys that you're not, mm. neither one of you are privy to. So it's not an easy situation that she's in. So I think it re- does require some grace to give to her and honesty. Like don't, if she wants to build up resentment, you don't build up resentment with her. You know, like make sure that you are as clear as possible, even if it's having to write a letter, if you're not ready to like have the courage to have the one-on-one conversation, but be honest. Hey, shout out to y'all and shout out to your new love affair. I hope y'all have a fun. All right. Here's another. Hey girls, hopefully you can hear me because I am in the car driving. But I just wanted to add to this episode of the Toxic R&B, the one song that you guys missed was, Girl, if it's alright, let's go somewhere and get it on tonight. I got a girl, but you look good tonight. Toxic as fuck. Toxic. That was my only addition to this. Thank you, girls. Keep doing what you're doing. Love the episode. Bye. Ciao. There it is. She said it. Wow. How did we miss that? Who sang that? I don't know. Beat was banging though. Yeah. That, I think that's why we was all jamming Ooh. to it. I probably still would. Da-na-na-na. Speaking of that, did you see Jesse Powell died? That made me sad. You know what that is? Yeah. I, I mean, I knew of him once he was dead. I knew the music that he made, but I didn't like follow his career at all. The way you said it. Okay. Uh, moving right along. Hi, Antoinette and Shanti. My name is Kenny. I'm a first time caller and I'll call myself a semi long time listener now. Um, really, really appreciate you both for the wonderful you girls you do on the podcast. And I'm calling because of your latest episode. First, I want to say that personally, I really enjoy this split up in episodes, so keep them coming. And secondly, I kind of wanted to address a little bit of what Antoinette was saying about her frustration with people using this um, this hostile kind of barrier, this hardness to protect their boundaries, this like I am who I am and nothing else matters. I actually think 
Uh, I don't think you mentioned in this in in that way, but I do want to say, I think people need to consider that so many people are just now finding the power in acknowledging their feelings and that being enough, like that being enough of a reason to do or not do something. And even more so that they don't have to acquiesce to the whims of those around them, especially if it's not in alignment with their own decision making. And so, yeah, I think people without um, kind of marinating or having more practice with the depths of the whys behind those feelings, that boundary setting can very much feel hostile. And I think I understand it because it's like you're protecting this newfound kind of power or this ability to step into yourself and have some power over of where you're going. So that's all I really wanted to say. Thank you guys again so much for a riveting episode. You guys are fly hook. Have a good day. Bye. Well, I don't even remember when I said that, but I'll take it. I think what we were talking about, about boundaries, right? And I was mentioning, yeah. yeah. I, I, I mean, I think she hit everything, hit the nail on the head. I, I don't have anything to add to that. I'm glad yeah, that she said it. Right? Like, mm-hmm. all right, here's one more. Thank you for calling, sis. Boop. Hi, Shanti and Anson Matt. Uh, long time listener here. Um, oh, I don't want to say my name because then I'm going to hear myself and be like, ooh, ooh. Oh. <laughs> um, but I have a question for you guys when it comes to blending family. So, you know, I, I'm Jamaican. My partner, um, his husband, is Italian and Jewish. His family is absolutely wonderful and just such great people, so welcoming, you know, you know, super just, you know, educated, well-learned, well-read, well-traveled, just, you know, you know, I don't want to say the good wife, but sure. Uh, <laughs> but right now we're in the middle, I mean, we're basically about to get married and, you know, I'm having these weird twinges of like feeling really overwhelmed because I'm really nervous and anxiety ridden just because like my family's kind of shown their ass more than once. And it's kind of like to the point where I'm just like, you guys are going to embarrass me in front of my new family. Like not saying I don't love you and I'm not saying I don't love them any less or you anymore or any of that, but it's like shit, you know, where it's just like, okay, like, you know, they threw us a beautiful rehearsal that are paid for everything. We went to the, you know, went over the border and got specific beers and shit we liked. And, like, just absolutely did a phenomenal job. And, like, here we are, you know, the day after. And I'm just asking, I'm like, hey, so, like, you know, did you, what did you figure out to give them as a best thank you? Like, they did you a huge fucking favor, you know? And she was like, yeah, you know, did you order flowers? And I was just like, what, bitch? What? Like, you know, not calling my mom that or anything, but it's just like, I'm about to get married. I have all these things going on, and you are still asking me to do things as if this is actually a regular Thursday. Like, you, like you're so out of touch that I, like, I so, I'm just trying to figure out, like, what would you guys recommend for me? Obviously, when you hear this, we'll be after this back, so maybe there's an update. <laughs> But thank you guys for all you do with your podcast. Like I listen to you guys every week, Monday and Thursday, so you know. And you know, I really I love the conversations you guys have, the openness, and it just makes me almost just you know, you guys open up you know tabs in my brain, and I'm like, ooh, let's carry the conversation elsewhere and see what other people have to say and stuff. So you know, I love you guys and all that you do, and thank you so much. And yeah, okay, love you guys. Ooh. Girl, I feel you 110% <laughs> when it comes to dysfunction and maybe not this. She ain't say dysfunction, but like having to navigate, navigate family, family. Yeah. Listen, they're your family now as well. Mm. So I feel like. They're going to have to see all of you, right? Like this, they, they, there, there's no way in so many ways that you can hide 
in a lot of ways. And like, the, it is a very vulnerable and scary thing and embarrassing thing in a lot of ways, but there's little control that you can have over how other people act, how other people are perceiving things, how other people are, um, you know, their willingness to, uh, to accept others or be accepted. I know it all too well. Um, and I think I've watched my own brother and, and blending the families together. And his wife has seen everything, child. And she's still <laughs> around. And her family, as an extension, has been exposed to everything. And it's rocky and it's hard, but it's also like, oh, this is what I'm marrying to. This is my family. This is what I I know now in so many ways. And like you may be having those honest conversations with your in-laws or whoever you feel really close with and being like, yo, I know this thing happened. Like, I'm sorry that happened. I'm grateful. This is kind of how they are. And as you get deeper in the relationship, you'll learn how to maneuver um, to the best of your abilities. But don't I know it all too well? I know you. Ah. The only thing that I'll add to that is, and I agree with you, I think um, a check in with yourself. It always worries me when I hear folks who are blending their families and entering into a new relationship. Um, when I hear that they are nervous about the other person meeting their family, out of shame, out of this, out of that. It's like that person, just like Shanti said, like they've got to know the real you. They got to know what you come with. And it's not excusing your family's behavior at all. But if you hide certain parts of yourself or try to put up a facade to be more likable for your partner and for your partner to do that. Right. That's, that's a lot. And there's mm -hmm. going to be shit with their family that's a hot ass mess too. You mm -hmm. said, what she said? She said Italian and Jewish. Yeah. Girl. <laughs> so, <laughs> so good luck. If you did get married already. Congratulations. Congrats. Um, all right. Next up. Oh, you're going to have fun editing this one. <laughs> <laughs> Shanti and Antoinette. I just started listening to y'all um, maybe two or three months ago, and y'all cracked me up. I was just sitting here in a horrible mood, um, just really going down the spiral. And instead of listening to this health help book, I was like, let me listen to them. They might have something funny to say. Man, the way that y'all have me crying, laughing, a comment. Shanti, why? Why are you like this? I love y'all. And um, thank you so much for what you do. And um, I will continue listening. Love you. Bye. Answer the question. Answer the question. What's what the everybody question? wants to know. Why are you like this? I don't fuck with Carmen. <laughs> no, why are you like this? You got to answer the question. Who made I, you? I don't know. Who gave you the right? Bad barbs and Karuna, child. I don't know. Ooh, Karuna. Listen Karuna. to that blended family. <laughs> bad Not bad and barbs and Karuna. Child, <laughs> bye. God. I can't. Me can't do it. Um, no the dead ass. Of that dysfunction, child. That's what it gives. Dysfunctional family gives you me, baby. Tricky. Well, uh, moving right along. <laughs> Here we go. Hi, Antoinette and Shanti. My name is Kenny. I'm a first time caller, and I'll call myself a semi long time listener now. Um, really, really appreciate you both for the wonderful work you do on the podcast. And I'm calling because of your latest episode. First, I want to say that personally, I really enjoy this split up in episode. I feel like so, we just heard this. We did. <laughs> Wait, I was listening like, this sounds really, <laughs> this edible is 44. Where is this girl? Oh, um, Jesus, what time is fire. it? What time is it? Forty four, forty two. I said this sounds. I heard this before somewhere. I'm nervous because somehow these got out of order. 
on the page. So I don't, I think I deleted one too. How are we going to do this? All right, ready? <laughs> <laughs> There's so many voicemails to sort through. I'm about to find one. All right. Y'all had me cracking up. Okay, that's 419. Okay. Click out of that one. Now we have... Uh-huh, 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 right here. I just make sure that's on the page. Okay, ready? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, so good morning, Sean P. and Annette. My name is Deanna, oh. and I'm a first time caller. And I was just basically calling to say that I love you guys, and I've been listening to you guys after you guys were on advice from an F boy with Clint Coley and Lou. I started listening to you guys, and I just fell in love with you. Even though I feel like internet gets a lot of backlash, I really hate that, and I'd be so mad. But whatever. But I love y'all because when y'all be having y'all little brain farts, I'd be in the car like, this word or that word, like, dang. Like, I'm the same thing, so it's funny to me. But like I said, I love you both. I follow you both on Instagram. And like I said, I just began mad a little bit with Antoinette. I feel like y'all both be saying the same thing, but Antoinette only catch the backlash. Because I feel like when Shanti, son, or Shanti said that Drake's son went to the left, nobody paid attention to that. But then when Internet made the Baby Carter comment, everybody was just like in an uproar. I'm like, but Shanti be saying the same thing. Well, I don't think people just be paying attention. No shade, Shanti, no shade. But again, I just wanted to call and say hi, and I love you both. And continue to do the podcast. I love it. The good episodes, the not so good, well, not so good episodes. What am I saying? The 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 realer, darker episodes. I love it all. So, <laughs> guys, hi. That's a great. Wow. One. She said Annette. She just <laughs> called you Annette. And then she had your motherfucking back. <laughs> right. The real one. I don't even have to know this bitch name in order to hold her down. Watch me work. Yo, I <laughs> listen, this week, I want y'all to come for Shanti because she came for y'all's Queen Zendaya and she deserves to be canceled. Let I'm me say something. The brown privilege. Let me say something. I'm tired of it. Zendaya and Beyonce? <laughs> you should have known Beyonce. better. You, you, you should have known better. You should have said nothing. Now, but Drake, you did say something about Drake. Son. His do son. That. Don't do that. Have you ever seen how the baby morphed into a white girl with yes. the ring? Oh yes. my god. Drake Drake liked it. Drake thought it was funny. See, he got he got He listen, got what? A it is brown. Humor. He does. He does. He's funny. I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this. What you gonna tell us? <laughs> tell us, girl. What you finish? It's over? true. Brown privilege is a real thing, Internet. So you apologize have, to me you for your privilege. Light skin privilege in a lot of other ways. Ooh, least, look. It balances it out. All right. Wow. So that's that's really messed up. Well, moving right along as soon as I find the voicemail. I'll just Ooh, add add another edit. <laughs> It's getting tricky over here. I ain't editing this, y'all. You know, I'm going fuck- to keep all this shit in there. I'm like, Shanti. Shanti, I've edited like all the episodes. <laughs> <laughs> uh. There was one that I did accidentally keep it, and then I hurried up. I was listening to it. I was like, oh, my God. And then I hurried up and fixed it and re-uploaded the thing. But I know people heard that. Why are these out of order? Everything was, like, organized and perfect. My you friends gotta and put neighbor. editors for real. Wow! Shout out to her. Got a little Virgo baby. Let's go. Let's go. All right, ready? Mm-hmm. This shit right here. All right. Hi, ladies. This is Jessica. Currently listening to episode one nine six one ninety six, um, and. Immediately in the very beginning of the episode, um, you can tell there was something wrong with Antoinette. And as she discloses what she's feeling, I reson- it re- resonated so much with me. I'm currently dealing with the same issues with weight and not feeling well, feeling off, feeling exhausted, um, and just not knowing what the core of it is. Um, I do know uh, a part of it has to do with me turning 35 and not feeling like, where the fuck am I going? Like, what am I doing? 
I've been wasting so much time. At least that's how I perceive it in the moment. But of course, as you reflect, you start to realize, oh my God, I have been doing everything that I set out, I set out for myself. Um, but yeah, so I am resonating so much with the internet at this time. Um, especially with managing the podcast. I recently, well, not recently, but in the last year, I started a podcast with my best friend of 20 years. Um, and me being the Virgo, I want everything to be perfect. Um, and I'm still learning how to properly podcast and advertise and promote our podcast and how we're going to break it up and what it's going to look like for us and it's constantly in my head. But unfortunately, at this time in my life, I'm just flustered and, like, procrastinating, and I'm just, like, lethargic. I, like, all of the things. All of the things. I say all this to say I am currently practicing giving myself grace so that I um, can be in the best headspace for my pod partner um, and for the people around me. Um, but yeah, I don't want to be that person. I know everyone says this when they leave a voicemail, but I don't want to be that person where they leave a long voicemail and I get cut off. But I just wanted to say, Internet, Shanti, I hope you guys give yourself the grace for whatever you're going through or feeling in the moment. Um, and you guys are doing amazing. You guys inspire me. You inspired me to start the podcast with my friend, although I was very hesitant considering she's been my friend for 20 years. I didn't want the podcast to be the thing that, like, breaks us apart, but he, um, he allows me to be me. He knows who I am, and so, therefore, it works out for us. But, yeah, this is just guys. I didn't mention that in the beginning. Um, I appreciate you ladies so much, and I hope you guys have to... Oh, sorry. <laughs> I just got distracted. What the fuck that is? I'm currently supposed to be working, so... Bye! <laughs> Y'all get Jessica. fired. <laughs> Jessica, thank you so much. Um, yeah, I mean, she said it has, to, I feel like she is me. She's like, I think it has something like, to do with me to turning 35. I don't know if I want to go into business. I don't want the business to mess up my friendship with my friend of 20 years. It's like, what do you want to be me so bad? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> um, thank you so much for calling. And I, I feel like a lot of people, resonate with my little journey with my little body yaddy and I will say it is therapeutic for me to be able to come on here and have a safe space for me to talk about it and I'm really grateful for that because I think I took that for granted I've been encouraging a friend of mine um, on her podcast to be more vulnerable about her journey and she was terrified terrified and when she did it she was received, you know, really well, but she was so afraid to do it because she doesn't feel that she has the same space, safe space that we do. Mm -hmm. And I thought to myself, I don't know if I would be able to do this if I had people telling me how much they hated me every week. Mm -hmm. This kind of work. You see what I'm saying? Lord Jesus. So um, I thank you all. I really do. From the, from the bottom of my heart, I do. Thank you. Um, and this is like, works perfectly, I think, with the next one. Hello. Um, I love your podcast. Love y'all so much. Um, I was just listening to your last episode, um, and I'm wondering if y'all could maybe, I don't know if you've spoken on this before, but talk about the difficulty of losing, of a friendship breakup. I lost one of my closest friends, uh, and I think that they're even harder than romantic breakups, just because you don't ever expect them to end. Anyway, I was just hoping y'all could speak about um, friendship breakups and whether or not it's worth it to reach out years later. I really about to try and mend things. Um, Anyway, love y'all. Bye. I feel like that's a topic, like a topic. I've been topic. trying to talk about it. You'd be like, no. Every oh, time I yeah, every time I bring that up in the topic thing, you're like, no, let's talk about something. Because everybody always thinks we about to break up. <laughs> I don't know why. 
I um I don't know. Should we even offer anything here? Or should we be like cliffhanger? I I, w- I think if you I'll say this, and we can go into more detail. I think that's a great topic for us to talk about, Shanti. If you feel it, if you feel the urge to reach out, right, and it's been years, and if you feel like you reaching out is not, um is in no way or shape or form you being like you, you having to trade off on your worth, your value, who knows? Like sometimes you reach out to people out of desperation. If it's not coming from that place, if it's coming out from a genuine place of like, I miss this person, I value this person, I'm ready to forgive. And they might not be, I say do it. That's just me. It. I, I suffered a friendship breakup. And we got our shit back, but it was years of us not speaking at all. And it took for, it took for one of us to reach out and that was me. And then that still didn't work. (laughs) I was really shocked and hurt even more. And then we finally got it together after like a year after that. So we can definitely talk about that, but. I have no regrets in reaching out at all. Yeah. And also just holding space for how painful that Mm. loss is. I don't think people talk about it as much. I don't think people understand the void. Like if I, if we weren't friends anymore, that would be so, that would be life altering. Mm -hmm. Agree. Life altering. (laughs) Yeah, that's wild. I'm sorry. We would be in couples therapy before we weren't friends anymore. I'll tell you that. That would be terrible. Wow. Mm. Yeah. So, so more more on this. More to come. Okay. Only a couple more good people. Hey, ladies. It's Brittany. I left a uh, voice night yesterday, but I'm listening to an episode about Solange. Uh, I think it's episode 23. No, 22. I want to know y'all's thoughts on the album again, See at the Table, because I, like y'all, didn't get it. I didn't like it. But when I tell you last year, I was playing that album out. And even this year. So I wonder an update if y'all have had time to come back to it and have a different view on it. Because it's really bomb. Okay. Thanks for all y'all do. You're awesome. When did Girl, we say you got that? us confused with somebody else? Because were we high? I always like I, we said that. She said episode twenty two. I'm going back right now. That's way too. First of all, my phone won't even scroll back that far. I my I, it was probably me. Episode twenty two. White folks Solange. Okay, it must have been you, Internet. Cause <laughs> don't blame me. <laughs> I said that. You must I said I didn't like a seat at the table. In this episode, we talk about white folks just now realizing water is wet. Our reactions to Solange is when I get home. Not a seat at the table, baby girl. Oh, yeah. When don't I get home. Me. It was the, right. It was the and other I, one. Not my favorite still. Not and my I ain't going to take that back. <laughs> Agree. I'm like, wait. All right, good. I'm glad we wrote that little description. I said, we both about to be can't. Oh, they about to get us. Cause you know my dumb ass and my hot takes. I'll be like, no, a seat at the table was was the shit. Yes. Go ahead. The next one, uh, there's a little diddly bops I like, but that old what, was that called when I get home. I thought it was called I'm a. What was oh, it, it wasn't that. It was I'm a. She's like I'm, when I'm alone. She just be making. Can you down, please keep saying when I'm alone? Down when I'm alone. <laughs> it's like the Solange. What? <laughs> Stop playing with me. Stop. 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 I'm like, girl, what in the sounds? She said, ding. Don't. Don't. And then they'd be like, you know Solange is there. Beat on that shit. It's a Solange song. <laughs> no, it's not. Matter of <laughs> fact, if it is, that's the that's the outro song. I need to hear it right now. Don't 
This is too long. That stop. is Solange. I don't know if it is. I don't know. I fuck with Solange. She be do. She be experimenting. Alchemy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here for you, girl. Fuck with Solange. Hey, this is Sheree from Houston. Welcome to the show. I just got an update on my podcast that you guys are doing a reprise, and it's just taking a week off. And I've never called the hotline, but I just really wanted to call and tell you, thank you for taking a week off. Y'all deserve a week off. We need to rest. We are not all superwomen. I recently lost a child and a relationship, for that matter. Um, we didn't survive the miscarriage. And you know what, sis? I took two weeks off of work and went to Jamaica for one of those weeks after I cried for the first week. And it's 6.47 right now. Child, I'm about to finish some work up and feel good about my first day back because I took as many breaks as I wanted. I came, you see, it's 6.48 p.m. I'm about to go back and do one more thing because I've taken a break. Breaks are necessary. I'm glad y'all are taking one. I love y'all so much. Y'all are going to be better when y'all get back, and we cannot wait to have you back. Wow. I'm telling you. First of all, Cherie, may God bless you. And I, Wow. I can't even believe in the midst of all of that, somebody will call to reaffirm us. Like what? It just, wow. Thank you for that. I, that's it. You nailed it. I hated the break. I'll be honest. I didn't hate it, but I was just, it's honestly, it didn't feel like a break because there was a lot happening, but I do think that having a conversation and strategically, of course, um, around a break, there's another podcast, other folks that I know, and they took three weeks off and their folks were supportive. And he was like, I just had to do it. I just had to do it. And we'll see. Because the folks, listens because are there. We're not machines because the railroad no, workers have to take a break off because that's just life happens. Love happens. Healing needs to happen. Yeah. Should be blessings to you on your healing journey. Mm-hmm. And the many waves that will come over you. I hope you find your grounding and lift off when you need to lift off, girl, because it is up and down. But thank you. Thank you for affirming us. I might fuck around and take another week off, Internet. <laughs> ah, this, this goddamn corporate. Like, I, <laughs> Internet is the closest to a corporation that I. I've ever worked. Don't do that to me. <laughs> Don't do that. I'm about to protest. <laughs> on strike. I've gotten better. Have I not gotten better? You have, Queen. And I think I've gotten so the, much better. Value in your own life. It's it's there. So kind I of, feel like I've gotten more. Work, you won't be stopping work from anything else. I know, but I I feel like I've gotten better with us. Where I'm like, I feel like I'm more flexible. No? I feel like it's a benefit of your own life as well for both of us. I feel like we're finding you won't just the balance. Give me that. The balance. All right. <laughs> All right. Next up. <laughs> Hello, ladies. My name is Jackie. I am a California listener. And I just have to say, you guys have brought me so much joy and laughter and just a variety of things to think about. I um, was put onto your podcast from Antoinette being a guest on See the Thing Is. Um, And of course, I found out that you're friends with Fran and Asante. And so I was like, let me give a listen. Let me give a listen, see what's going on. And I have fallen in love with Santi and Antoinette. Um, I love your podcast. Um, I go from laughing to furious to thinking to the point where I get a migraine based on some of your topics. I'm listening at a lot of the old episodes and just learning a lot and loving everything about um, 
the exchanges between you two, um, the way that you, uh, you guys have conversations that provoke thought and all these different avenues and areas of the topic, I just love it. Um, keep doing a great job. And I love that you guys are friends with uh, Jasmine. Um, and I, I just, it explains a lot. If she has friends like you and Shanti and Amanda, you guys are all connected. I see why uh, you guys are out here shining, shining. And um, I'm a much older woman, born in the 60s. But I love everything that you guys are doing. I just love it. Um, you are my new favorite podcast. I listen to several. Um, right now, you are my, my favorite, my new favorite. Uh, keep doing what you're doing. Um, love you, lady. All right. Bye-bye. Oh. <laughs> what better way to end? What better way to end? That made me cry. Day? Jackie, Miss Jackie, Jackie. Cali- Miss Jackie from California. Shout out to you. You know who you are, sis. Out of your mouth into God's ears, into my ears, touching my soul. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. I have a little bit of um, a lie. That's not the end note. Jackie called back, and I, I think it's really important that I play what she said. If I'm being honest. Hi, ladies. It's Jackie again. I called earlier today. It might have been last night or early this morning. But I forgot to say that, Annette, I agree with you about the whiz. <laughs> I, it I was an adult when I finally watched it, and I sat there baffled at what was all the, the hype. I didn't like it at all. I didn't. I just liked the one song with um, "Ease On Down the Road." The rest of it, uh, I never want to see it again. I don't want to be reminded. You are correct. It was a horrible um, remake or our version of it. Leave it alone. We are talented enough to create something totally new and different. We don't have to bite off of anybody. We have great creative minds in our culture. So I definitely agree with um, your whiz uh, or the whiz take. So I, I don't know how I forgot to tell you that. I just need you need to know that there are other people out here who agree with you. All right. Bye, ladies. Bye. So if Miss Jackie from California, born in the fifties, agrees with my little raggedy ass about the whiz, I am right. This respect, is it. I respect your opinion, Internet. You, I don't respect your opinion. <laughs> That's not how it's the same opinion. And I feel like Miss Jackie's was stronger. She said horrible. I she never need to see it again. You never need to see it again. <laughs> <laughs> it's that line. We keeping that for the book. Never need to see it again. <laughs> never need to see it again. New tagline, Miss Jackie. Called Thank back. You. And she said, I don't know if I called yesterday, this morning. Or two minutes ago, but I need to get this the fuck off my chest. Listen, I have something to say. Oh, come on. I wanted to publicly thank you, Antoinette, for the work and the labor and the talent in which you go on other people's shows and be the dynamic being that you are and bringing guests over. To our platform, you take off of work. Sorry to her job. If you are listening, that is a lie. And I am confused as to logistics of it. So I don't actually know. But she works hard. And, um, oh. (laughs) No, in all seriously. And she genuinely has relationships with all these people, Sante, Jay, all these people that generally, like you said before, fuck with you. Yeah, you and me, Brie. They're charming, dynamic, and unforgettable. So shout out to you for 
being an attractive being in all the ways. Thank you. And thank you to all the listeners who have come on down. <laughs> what? <laughs> what a beautiful... <laughs> come on no, down. No, I gotta go. <laughs> you... You just said such beautiful flowery language. And thank you to the listeners for coming on down. What? <laughs> Gotta keep it real. Some fucking braces, right? you know I, mean? I would like to thank you, Shanti. Girl, this is, that's be, it. You ain't got <laughs> just being you. Because I don't know nobody else in this world that I say more in my head where I'm like, why is she like this? Who made her? You are brilliant. You are insane clinically. (laughs) You have a bit of an attitude problem. Nobody knows this. (laughs) But wait. She don't like something. I kept it all nice with you. Let's keep it... um <laughs> Look, he's sunning me right I now. <laughs> yeah, shut the no, fuck up, yo. <laughs> I say this and I mean it. There, I don't know anybody else I would want to do this with. Doing life's work, life Doing partner. Life's we we might get married soon. <laughs> it ask- don't work. Might at least buy an apartment, a house together. You know, shack up a little bit. I wonder if my mom would be mad if I shacked up I with a woman. Think- <laughs> what's crazy is I love you so much and we could do hard things together but I don't think I ever want to live with you wow Only I said be- buy a property together All right, <laughs> build wealth not live and then together you said shack up you can buy a property and rent it out but we're just different you you give me anxiety mm. you give me anxiety because you just be you're handsy with stuff but I love you so much so much. I love you. I love your daughter. You, you keep love dust bunnies face. in the middle of your <laughs> fucking house. I don't love you. you either, nigga. <laughs> you cleaning up and then leaving dust bunnies. Never mind. <laughs> Shit. That a fool. Myself. You know what's go. funny? Somebody called about that and I didn't play it. They called about the dust buddies and they were giving me advice on what vacuum to buy. You sh- she got a vacuum. <laughs> Somebody already bought her a vacuum. You know what you need? A handheld, John, where you don't have to pull it out. It's just... That's the thing. It's so That's what bulky. You need. The vacuum is out right now. And can I be honest? It's the broom is right there. And it's a pile. Do you have of- a pile right now? Shame. I do. I just... I'm looking at it. It's in the corner. Because I swept the bathroom and yeah, that I that would drive it. me crazy. That look was at my nails, day. internet. <laughs> gotta, we gotta go. I was looking. I was like, what the fuck happened to Shanti's She's like, not Shanti's. Look at nails looking like God intended. <laughs> Got out here looking like... <sighs> ah, my throat hurts. <clears throat> All right. We gotta All right, go. y'all. We love you so much. Thank we you for the you ways so much. that you pour into us. I don't think y'all know how you pour into us and help us in our ways. In the ways Internet, of the world. Internet, what are you doing? <laughs> I wish y'all could. If, also, if you want to see no, you that see you should it. become a patron <laughs> on our Patreon. You couldn't see. My cheeks hurt from laughing at you, so I was Gosh. massaging the cheek out. I, I'm sure that looked weird if you didn't, if you weren't. <sighs> well, we appreciate y'all. Yes, and, and please continue to call us at 215-948-2780. Your love. With that, we are out. How was that? How did you that feel about good. our all voicemail? You think was, people will listen? I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> see. <laughs> they'll be like, they'll be like, this is just playing to- people's Bigging them up. Yes, they ain't even responding fully. We're like, yeah. I don't I mean, what I don't know what she said. I think so as well. She said it all. She said that's what we said to about 97%. There's nothing we can add to that. No, thank you. They might listen because wow. it's mad people. Why am I doing this? <laughs> you you need to go to 
stupid. Don't <laughs> worry. No, when I when I log in for work tomorrow, I'll be like, I can't wait. I'll be like, yes, yeah, so, this is how I'm talking to everybody at work. No. Yo, let me tell you how much I don't give a fuck. I was on calls like this today. Oh, well, that's right. Actually, that's like, inappropriate, internet. Bro. That's inappropriate. I know. It was only with my boss and like two other women, but I said, listen, why am I on camera? This way, don't ask me to be on camera. They this make you be on it. camera? They don't make you, they peer press you on this new team. They're like, and um, because the, the first thing they do is you just see they fucking smiling face like, and they're dressed up too. I said, not y'all in the house dressed the in top. workwear. All you gotta do, the, all you had to do was put a shirt on. I ain't got no shirts. All my stuff is still summer. I haven't had a chance to flip my room over. Speaking of which, Rihanna. girl, I cleaned my closets out. Dust I organized them. Ooh. Oh, Come man. Now I got to get containers. I need the containers for my hat, container for my scarf. I'm so excited. I love that for you so I much. I know. I know. Really you got to keep it that way. Stuff. That's the problem. I should be like that. And then all of a sudden it's not. I, I didn't try it on 10 outfits and now they sit on the floor. You got it. It's the maintenance. The maintenance of life. I keep, I ask my friends. They all have maids. <laughs> Even Jade has a maid come in. It's like, y'all really living different lives. Really different lives. She has somebody come in, I think, either once a week or... Once every two weeks and clean. I enjoy cleaning too much. I just don't have time. I don't mind it. I enjoy cleaning. I like touching stuff. I like it. I like it. At least I know you like touch. touching stuff. What I say, you're handsy, you're touchy. You like to not touch your things and just collect. Anyway. I'm concerned about this one voicemail. The, okay. It's the first one that's missing. What was the first voicemail? Stop. God. Was it? It wasn't sex and capitalism. It was like the sweet girl. She was a little long winded. I think she called like twice. That was fine. Brianna was fine. No, I I can't find her voicemails. What I'm saying because oh, I you said you deleted one. it <clears throat> by accident. Seven. I think I found it. I think we're good. Crisis averted. Bing bing. You know what was the crisis that was diverted? 2019 and 2020. Stop playing with me. Oh my God. Uh, Did you confirm that? Where's the paper, Shati? I'm going to find it. It is, girl. Uh, uh, what you mean you got to find it? Where is it at? They're You're killing the, my high. They're in the, um, a drawer. What drawer? I'm not getting up to go get it, but I will confirm it. I really will. Girl. I you can't celebrate yet. Done. No, I can't. Until you go see that, those two papers? Mm-hmm. I'm not celebrating. I'm going to go get it right now. You're blowing it so. I'm going to tell you hey sorry i had a super busy day but i got your um <clears throat> your voice messages and thank you so much for that i've definitely failed <laughs> and won a little bit and then failed some more and then failed further and then won a little bit and then failed further so now you know i'm just Right now, I'm super focused on working out for my mental health and trying not to focus on what happens in the mirror and, let, and letting that be secondary. But a, a larger focus of mine is on you the nutrition turn this recording off. and on um, 2019, 2020. One moment, Shanti. Um, Who are you talking to? I, was, <laughs> no, I can't send that. Who are you talking to? I didn't realize this. 